It's such a joy to be with you today and uh, I really thank God for the presence, for the worship, for the music and really enjoyed, uh, refreshing to be in the presence of God. Amen. How many of you are very happy today? Can I see your hands? I see your hands and so happy and uh, Today I wanted to share something uh, which will really, really, really make us to rise up to a level where we can fulfill our destiny, our, our plan that God has got in our life for. Amen? Amen? So as pastor was telling, you know, such a happy thing, my son, uh, he got graduated in his Bible college and uh, of course he's pursuing his higher studies in the Bible and uh, he worked in a secular company for six months and he then he felt very sure to leave the job and uh, I, I was very happy you know why because people must know what they want to do with their life you can't just do because your father is a preacher or something. So, so I thought it will take a few years, but he came and said, I didn't tell you that I've, I've lost my joy. Even though I work, I don't have the joy when we come to serve God. And he says, I'm going to come back and serve the Lord. And I was very sure. And uh, then after that, he has come. And we go around serving the Lord. Amen. It's such a joy to serve the Lord, you know that? Some of us, we don't know, but God has called us for a great purpose. And I tell you, God is going to use all of us and we're a defined, definite purpose. Amen? So I'm going to ask my son to say a few words, whatever he wants to greet or share. So over to Joshua. Thank you. <clears throat> It was such a joy for me to be here in front of all of you and to share. So I'd like to thank Pastor for giving me the opportunity. Thank you so much. And uh, I also enjoyed the worship today, which was, uh, I mean, it was so energetic. I don't think any other church will have like this. And you guys are blessed to be here. Well, I just want to say one thing is that, you know, one thing which God has been putting in my heart is that to remain joyful always, you know, you know, sometimes when we go through situations, uh, it's very hard to be joyful at all times. You know, when things are happy, when we, are, when we are happy, it's easy to be joyful. But the question is, will we be joyful when we are going through hardship or when, we are, when our situation is not good? Do we remain the same? Do we have the same joy as we were when God was, when things were happy for us? You know, when we see in the Bible, in the story of so, uh, Paul and Silas, um, you know, they were thrown in prison and, you know, they were completely beaten up, bruised. And they had every right to murmur and complain to God saying, Lord, I'm doing for you and why are you putting me in this situation? But the beauty is they did not you know, murmur. But one thing they did was that they kept praising God. You know, when we... They kept praising God even though the circumstances was not good, even though the situation was not in a very nice way. They kept praising God. And praising God is actually a very big a weapon and a secret for all of us because, you know, when we praise God, every bondage, every uh, obstacle that we have will be broken. You know, when, when Paul and Silas kept praising God, the chains were broken, the prison was open, everything. They were set free. So even in our lives, you know, it's very hard sometimes. But we get to be praising God. See, praising God in good times is one thing. But praising God even in bad times is uh, another level. And God really sees that. So, you know, no matter what situation you guys are going through, you know, might be financial it might be you guys might have lost your job. And sometimes, you know, we might be having a feeling where why do we need to praise God? Sometimes our circumstances will be like 
we don't need to praise God. But you keep praising God and God will give a breakthrough in each and every one of your lives. And sometimes, you know, in our thoughts, when the devil sometimes comes and says to us saying, you don't need to praise God, see where you are. But keep telling yourself that even though my circumstances are not good, even though my situation is not good, I will still keep praising God. No matter what my circumstances might be, I will still keep praising God because I believe God is going to do a miracle in my life. No matter how long it's going to take, God will do a miracle in my life. And when you keep believing that definitely you are going to have a breakthrough in your life and God is going to take you to a new great level. And I just want to say each and every one of you that God loves you very much. You know, no matter what you're going through, He loves you. So much where he cares for you. You know, he cares for you so much where he, he will be willing to do anything for you to take you to, you know, greater levels. So you guys all have a great purpose and a destiny in life. No matter what it is, he's going to take you. He's going to use you mightily for his kingdom and for his purpose. And all of you have a great future. Thank you. Amen. Check. Uh, uh, brother, the sound system, the monitor is, uh, if you can switch it off or uh, one monitor is enough. You just, uh, just see what, what you can do. There's some disturbance. So this morning, I want you to turn your Bibles to the incident that happened, which you find it in Luke chapter 5 is, uh, you know, before Jesus, before Jesus could uh, bring Peter and uh, his disciples to full-time ministry, thank you. Turn to Luke 5. Huh? It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful passage, Luke 5. Okay. You see an incident before everything that you know how Jesus' ministry started. Here, Jesus is requesting Peter to just, if he could use his ship or his boat for a very short time. That is to go sit down there and then the people, or so many people on the shore, he could preach to them. So he's borrowing He's not uh, renting it. He's just, just using it. And uh, he said, can you push it inside a little bit? Uh, and then he sat and taught the people out of the ship. That is in verse 3. Luke 5, 3. And then you see, you, you, you just think, no? He wants to bless the man. He wants to bless him. He has given the, uh, his boat for him to use. And he wants to bless him. This is what I see. And he says, okay, why don't you uh, he, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for. And Simon is telling, master, we have toiled all night and we have taken nothing. So at that moment, Peter is in a very sad situation. He has worked all night long and caught nothing. That means that day is a failure. Is, the, is that correct what I'm saying? Is, is that what your Bible is reading? Verse uh, 5. Somebody can read. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Okay. When he did that, what happened? When they had this done, they, dis they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net to break. In the Tamil Bible, it says it, it was almost a breaking condition. In Tamil, it reads like that. Okay, it, it was almost in that. And then they had to call their friends 
who were also nearby and they all came to help him and they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. Now this is another problem. Boat began to sink because of the overload of fishes. Now what do you understand? This is the beginning of the call. Before he could call Peter and then he says, uh, when, in verse 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Now, I, why did this happen? We don't know. But you know what was going on inside? The next verse says, And he was astonished, and all that were with him, as the draught of the fishes which they had taken. That means the fishing industry has not seen such a great haul, a great harvest of fishes. They have not seen. It has never happened. So they were astonished. How can this happen? And I tell you, then Jesus is telling one verse, tenth verse. Can everybody concentrate on that? And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Now my question is, what is that fear not? Have you ever wondered what fear not? Huh? Why fear not? He's happy. But see, Jesus speaks to Peter, at the same time, he's speaking to all of us through that incident. He says, fear not. There are different kinds of fear. But Peter knows and Jesus knows and today you also know. He's telling, fear not, for I'm going to make you what I'm going to make you, fishes of men. Then, he, then what happened? No, immediately when they had brought their ships to the land, they forsook all and followed him. Now, this is the beginning of of following Jesus. They forsook all. That means they gave up their business, they gave up their boat, they gave up their net, they gave up the fish, they gave everything and they started to follow Jesus. Now this happened in the beginning. This is the call. Call of the disciples. They left everything and followed. They saw something and they followed. Now in between, he's telling, fear not. When I read that, what is the fear not he's telling is, earlier, now you listen, Peter had his brother called, what's his brother's name? Do you know Peter's brother? Andrew. So this Andrew has gone and told Peter, Peter, the Messiah, we, Messiah we've been waiting for, he has already come. Come and see Jesus. He takes him to meet P, uh, Jesus and, okay. And now, Peter is not an ordinary person. Peter is a real, real man from the street. He will not believe everything just like that. So, there is a something in his life. The Messiah has come, we are going to follow. But he has not made a decision. And now Jesus comes, uses his boat, and then does a big miracle and then he tells him fear not. You know what? Whenever a person becomes a disciple of Jesus, they sometimes have to forsake. They have to forsake. Forsake a lot of things and they come. Now, pastor is talking about, he mentioned about my son. So he has... One question he had is the question that you have, the question everybody has. When I first took him to Loyola College where he wanted to study something to do with the secular college uh, degree, and then I asked him a question, what do you want to do with your life, rest of your life at large? Is this what you want to study and then take up a job? Then he told me, Dad, I see myself go talk about Jesus, sing about Jesus, like what you do. I want to go around the world and serve the Lord. 
then i said if that is your focus i request you to do in the daytime bible college then also you can do correspondence bba instead of doing the secular college like that do this one in live go to the college and study then do this one so he asked me a question yes i'm going to do that but how will the finance it come into my life very very valid question real question if i'm going to serve god if i'm not going to do work how will money come can i live in this life that is a big question he had i knew that and then after he finishes bible college he went and did this he said i'm going to work as a hr financially you will be taken care then you can also serve god or support you also daddy also i can support that was his concept now this is something very real which is limiting lot of people from doing what they are called to do because they always feel if you serve jesus you may be in want and you will not get everything that you like to buy but if you work you are going to get money which is also not very true because god is trying to show us from the scripture lot of things i'll tell you now these people are disciples who are these people they are disciples disciples get discouraged they got discouraged when they saw jesus hanging on the cross i left everything 3 and 1/2 years i'm following this man and he gave the promise that he will take everything now he is pathetic is on the cross very very true you must be real you can't pretend like some people say oh god is there everything no though they saw in their own naked eyes jesus and the same jesus is helplessly hanging on the cross they thought he'll jump out and finish all this fellows this was one of the things that discouraged them we thought he's a macho god he's going to come and kill all the enemies no he got killed now you, you just imagine you told your wife you told your children that you're following somebody called jesus he's somebody great messiah he's going to give back he's going to get us free from all the roman tyranny and finally he got himself killed now what is the answer you're going to give very very shameful for them to go back home and say all they the wives will ask the questions the people will ask their questions what is it that you guys went but your boss is now no more he's been treated like this and he couldn't help himself the god whom he claimed also couldn't help and right before our eyes he's looking so pathetic now what has happened peter and all the disciples they got scared they got discouraged then they were very very deflated that is the truth and then peter is telling i'm going fishing i'm going fishing so kindly move with me to john chapter 21 that's the last chapter st john so this is reality discouraged and now going back to what they know best and then here you see uh, in chapter 21 third verse simon peter said unto them i go a fishing they say unto him we also go with you they went forth and entered into the ship immediately and that night they caught nothing <laughs> it is now this is this is re- re- resembling another previous incident this is exactly was the situation when you see in the beginning of their uh, life of following jesus they said night all night long we tried fishing we couldn't get anything the lord jesus did a miracle the, the net was almost breaking and then the ship two sh- boats were almost sinking such was the blessing after that they enjoyed what jesus was doing now jesus is not there now jesus comes after his resurrection to reinforce the same lesson why because we can forget 
when sorrows come, when toils come, when problems come in our life, we can get discouraged. Now, this is absolutely discouraged situation. And they are telling, no? They are telling, what are they telling? Let's go fishing. But did they do any fishing? They got nothing. Because Jesus in the morning, fourth verse, was now come. Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Why? Because you see, the body that Jesus had was now a glorified body. That's why uh, this is the body that I believe we'll all have when we are resurrected, when you are with him. We will have a glorified body. And that body is basically, this is what I see people say, people look much younger. They don't see us old people, even when they get into heaven. They have a, they can recognize, but you look different. And even Mary cannot recognize Jesus. She says, gardener, she thought, the gardener. Then she says, oh, rabbi. Then the Lord said, don't touch me. Because she's so excited, she wants to hug. She says, no, don't touch me. I'm, I must go there. I must be glorified. So don't touch me right now. Put your hand around me or anything. Because his body is different. Okay, this is all the background of things that happen. So now here, that's why they are not able to... It is taking a little uh, time for them to figure out who this is. And then they, they could find out when, when this happened. And Jesus said in 5th verse, uh, 21st chapter of John said unto them, Children, have you any meat? And they answered, No. Like a father, like a papa is telling, My dear boys, do you have any food? They said, No. So all night long you've been working and you got no food, right? That is your condition right now. And uh, Jesus is now telling, when he said this, no, the, the uh, seventh was therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved said that is John huh? uh, Peter it is the Lord when Simon heard uh, it was the Lord then you know he moved jumped into the water to go reach out to the Lord and then as soon as they came to the shore ninth was they as they were come to the land they saw fire of coals there and fish laid thereon and bread and Jesus said unto them bring the fish which you have caught. That is, already he got fish, already he got the fire, already he has prepared the breakfast for the children. They don't need to bring fish. Jesus know how to bring fish and Jesus know how to fix a breakfast, everything. So you can bring your fish also. But the Bible says, when they landed, Jesus was ready to give them, feed them. And when he, then they came to that, no, then what has happened? When they are talking, he's feeding them. And then he's asking Peter, Peter, do you love me more than this? Then Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. And immediately Jesus says, if you say you love me, then you feed the sheep. Feed my lamb. Second time he's asking, Peter, do you love me more than this? Because this fishing business and all these things. Then if you love me, you have to feed my lamb. So three times when he says, he says, feed my. What do you learn from these two incidents that took place in the beginning of the ministry and when they are going to continue the ministry after Jesus leaves with the power of the Holy Spirit, they move to a higher level. But what was Jesus trying to uh, reinstate and reinforce? You know, what do you think, no? You must know, brother, sister, number one, no, there is a fear. Both the times the fishing industry has not seen where the boat is about to sink, the net is about to break. When its net is about to break, no, it's, 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 it's overflowing. What the Lord is trying to teach these people and strengthening their faith is what you and I need to know. What I'll tell you, simple, no? Every one of us have a concern about finance. Because of your fear of finance, your mind is restricted. How many of you agree with me? You know, I want to tell you something. 
Now this is for the disciples. Everyone who is seated here, who has been saved, who is born again, you are a disciple. I want to tell that to you again. Everyone who is saved has been recruited into the army of Jesus Christ. We are serving Jesus. If you are a disciple, then the disciples gathered together and that place was called church. Church is nothing but a gathering of his disciples. How many of you feel that you have been saved? Okay. How many of you feel you are a disciple of Jesus? I want your hands. If you are serious, put your hands. If you are not sure, don't need to just do it. So, anybody? I'm seeing. Okay. People, you are not sure that you are a disciple. Let me tell you, this is not a business about religion. This is a place which is the church of Jesus, is the body of Christ. Only disciples, only disciples know what it is to follow Jesus. Everybody who gets saved from their sin and from hell, and they get saved by putting their faith in Jesus, they, they are grateful to Jesus. They're grateful and then they follow. And that's what you see. When they came and saw the abundant things, they forsook all their net, their boat and followed him. What has happened is when you get, come to know Jesus, your life is turned around telling, for the rest of my life, my focus is different. I want to live for the one who gave his life for me. Amen? Amen? My friend, I want to tell you, the Lord loves you so much. The Lord loves me. The only thing that keeps going, pulling me through is the love of the Lord, his promises, his presence. He's the Father God who is always with you. Even your earthly father might leave you. That means he may, he may go to glory. He may die. Daddies sometimes die. Mothers die. Grandmothers die. And you also will die. Everybody is one day. So in that journey, sometimes we might lose our parents. You may not have a dad. You may not have a mom. So in that situation, the Lord says, I will never leave you. I will not forsake you. I will be with you till the end of the ages. He loves you so dearly. And when you experience that love, it is not only for worldly prosperity, though prosperity is part of God's blessing, but God has got a calling on your life. God has called you and me for a greater purpose. He has called you from the mother's womb. So from the mother's womb, he called and predestined you. That's why you got saved. There are people hearing the messages not getting saved also for years. But for you, your heart opens and God reveals himself. That is the grace of God. That means he has predestined you. And I tell you, your name is already written in the book of life. That's why you get saved. The Bible teaches that thing. You already been written in the book of life. And that's why you come to know the Lord. Don't ask me all the other questions and get confused. But the fact that you have come to know the Lord is not by just accident, but because of God has predestined, there's a great purpose, and he has uh, made you to come to know. He's changed your heart. He's changed your mind. Your mind could not understand, but now it could understand. So the devil also will work 24 uh, uh, by 7 on you to distract you. The devil's job is to distract God's children from the papa's love, from the daddy's love. And he'll bring distractions, things that you may love. That's what he brings. So you must be watchful. So that's why your alertness is important. My alertness is important. Elijah, Elisha, when he said, I'm going to give you a double portion of the anointing, he said, no, I will give you if you can sustain till the last to keep your eyes. When I'm going to be taken, if you can see, you can receive the double portion. Now, my friend, if you can keep your eyes on the Lord and fix your eyes on the Lord, not take your eyes and go after something else, you or life will be different. But the devil will try to bring so many things. That's why number one thing 
Right now we are going through everybody's fear is financial stability. How will I survive? How will my finance be? What should I do? Where should I work? God has got some people to work in the government. God has called some people to work in the business. God has called some people to work full time also. That means they'll leave the job. Not everybody will leave their job, okay? So your life now, you will still work and still serve Jesus. You will go and work in the government and still serve Jesus. Then you may feel, oh, I don't feel happy. I want to serve the Lord full time. Then you must come full time. That is you and God, what he is doing in your life, okay? I don't know what state you may be, but I want to tell you, the fear of finance stops a lot of people. Ask people, it's very difficult. Joshua also struggled with that. Then he quit his job and came. He had no question that is the Lord's doing. He never asked me, Daddy, what I will do? Because that, that, that question is over. Then only a person can leave and come. A person wanted to go and work and make money and think he can help me and the family. But he says, I lost my joy. I feel the Lord is calling me to come and serve. So that question is gone but many people we struggle and that's the reason why I feel this miracle happened why this miracle happened is you will see Jesus you know, he says one, one beautiful Bible verse in John chapter 10 verse 10 John gospel 10 verse 10 it's a beautiful verse see you must know the Lord says, the thief cometh only in order to steal, kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life. How many of you think if you come to serve Jesus, you lose the joy, you can't enjoy, you can't have fun? Who told you? <laughs> I tell you to serve the Lord is the most adventurous and the joyful thing. And the way he surprises with good things uh, is because he is El Shaddai. He is the God, our provider. And you see he, he beautifully he, what he's trying to say. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance. The, the Amplified Translation says, to the full till it overflows. What is abundance? To the full till it overflows. Now, both the incident of the hall, that is the fishing, it overflowed. It overflowed so much, the boat began to sink, the net began to break. So, what is God is trying to say? I am a God who will bless you in abundance. Abundance. Tell abundance. Abundance. Abundance is overflowing. It's overflowing. Now, the Lord says, I have come to give you life to enjoy. And I have come to give life in abundance. Can you read it again? You guys help me, please. I came that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Correct, your Bible says that? Yes, more abundantly. So in life, more abundantly means, he says, to the full till it overflows. To the full overflows. Now if you not experience, your mind is restricted because of fear. You don't know that Jesus can provide. You have not believed. So in life, you must learn to believe God to provide for you. Not only your job. Even if you are working in the job. If, how many of you are working in a job? Okay. Sir, what do you get at the end of the month? That's all. I am talking about income. You are, talk, you are talking about salary. Okay. Your salary is limited. Maybe a few thousands. But the income is God will give extra. God knows how to supply your need. My God shall supply my, all my needs according to his riches and glory. So apart from your salary, God is able to provide. That is what is income. So never make your salary your income. Your income will make more income. That is why God is giving you money is... For you to sow, there are seeds. God is giving you seeds and when you sow, it will multiply 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. So what happens is your income will increase. Did you get that? People, did you catch what I am saying? Uh, because a lot of people don't know. They only live by their salary and they die with their salary. Very poor. But I am telling you, God has given you salary so that your income will increase. 
So your money is only little restricted and only you're thinking about borrowing and EMI and all those things. Your life is totally different. Your life will not, you will not understand what I'm talking about. Your life of abundance is when you start sowing. I'm telling you now, listen carefully. There's something called first fruits. Uh, or that is the first thing that God has given you. Give it back to God or, or you can give it to a man of God or to a church or a ministry. That's different. Then you have the tithes. You know about tithes. Tithes is the one-tenth. When you give your tithes to the church, to a man of God, to a ministry, whatsoever, you are not being very generous. Sorry, you are not generous. You are not trying to tell I am great. No, by giving your tithes, you are saving yourself from being called a thief because one-tenth is mine, says the Lord. So you better give back what belongs to him and you are not becoming generous. Are you with me? Did you get that right? Giving your tithes is, it is God's. He says, one-tenth of your money is mine. You're, you give it to the Lord. So you're just obeying so that you're not a thief. If you don't give, then you become a thief. That's all. So by giving our tithes, we're just doing our duty so that we are clean. Okay. But I tell you, our life is some people don't think anything. Don't even give tithes. If people live by a concept of not giving their tithes, they will not see abundance. They will not see financial blessings in their life. Okay. But if you restrict only to tithes, you have not seen the best. The best is yet to be. I told you first fruits, then I told you tithes, then there's something called alms. Giving alms means to the poor. When you give alms, the Lord says you're lending it to God. That is, if you lending means it will come back to you. Give, give 100 rupees, 100 rupees will come. That's all. Lending is that, right? I give you 100, then you give back 100. Okay, that's all. I give 10 rupees, the 10 will come. That is alms. But there is another thing, the fourth thing is the sowing, the sowing of the seeds. When, and the Bible says the sowing of the seeds become 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Repeat, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Now, if you are a careful, smart person, you will start sowing. You look out for opportunities. You look out for people who are genuine, who are in need. Then when you sow, give them. You see, no, you give 2,000 rupees and see how 20,000 mela it will come. Lot of God sees how to bless you 34, 64, 100 fold. So my friend, you, what I'm preaching is a part of what I'm sharing the topic. But these four things are there. And if you are generous in that, you know, you be smart how you give. Not only tithes, but your offerings. You want to bless people. When you see people in need, when you see people in need and there's something stays in your heart to give that money, I tell you, that becomes sowing. When you sow, it comes in many, many fold. I tell you, you cannot just handle it. God's blessings will come. So please learn from the Bible. If you come to church regularly and you don't learn, then you don't benefit. But when you learn and when you act, when you fulfill what God has told you, you will see results. You will see results. It's like sowing some seeds and the tree will come after a long time. Then the fruits will come after a long time. And there will be a lot of seeds in those fruits. And then you sow again and then your harvest becomes big. So in your mindset, know how you must develop is Church, I'm telling you, don't be like the world. The world will only know buying and selling. They know what? What is that? Yes, you you have one uh, you have one old cycle in your house. What does your mind says? Let's sell it for thousand rupees. Second hand, somebody. That's how the mind. Anything you want to sell, then you want to buy. Sell, buy. But now after what I'm sharing, learn to sow so that you'll reap. Maybe that cycle is there. There's somebody who thinks cycle is like one Mercedes Benz. I don't have. If I have a cycle, I'll be very happy. Give to them freely. Bless them. That is sowing. So you move from, uh, you know, selling and buying. You move to sowing and reaping. You'll reap a big harvest. So if you have a heart to bless people, you will reap a big harvest. So in your mind, look for opportunity that you can sow. You can give something that you don't use to someone and always believe what I'm sharing from the word that is sowing. 
you're blessing somebody who is in need. And God sees that and brings many fold into your life. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you listening? So in your life, move from just buying, borrowing, stealing, borrowing and all those things, no? That all we shouldn't go. Just think about when you give to God, when you bless people, it will come back to you many, many fold. So this is apart from what I am saying. When I say abundance, no? Your abundance in life will also come by your sowing. The sowing is a very important thing to make your income increase, not live your life only restricted to your salary. Are you with me? Your salary, salary, salary is small. You will be crying all your life. No. Let your salary be there. God will provide. I don't have a salary, but I have an income. God is meeting my needs. Money will come. And uh, I live a life better than the people with salary. I can feel sorry I don't have a salary. I can go draw money from my ministry. But I said, let others be blessed. When the money comes, okay. But I'm happy because I have learned all these years, even during famine, during difficult moments, I've learned one thing. My God is still alive. Jesus is still alive. He knows my needs in advance. He comes and he has prepared everything. That's why his name they call Jehovah Jireh. In the mount of the Lord it shall be taken care. Eh? So this is not only for Abraham. This is not only for a pastor. This is not only for an evangelist. It's for every child of God who respects the word of God and puts the faith 100% on the word and learn to live by faith. So I'm asking you, your future can be very scared if you don't know all these things. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. The just will live by faith. When other people will be just, they don't know what to do, then the world thinks about committing suicide, killing themselves. No. But you will survive. Even in the famine, when people all wanted to run away to Egypt, even Abraham ran away to Egypt, but Isaac, the Lord says, you don't go to Egypt because of famine. I will bless you in the same famine land. It is not your circumstances that cause you to be prosperous. It's the God who is with you will cause you to be prosperous. Hallelujah. The Lord says, you be in the same place, don't run to Egypt. And you sow. And that year he sowed. And how much blessings? Hundredfold blessings. In the famine, he blessed Isaac hundredfold. So my friend... The abundance comes from God. The blessings comes from God. This is the lesson that God teaches to these people in the very beginning so that you don't start your life and live with a restricted mindset. What is the restricted mindset? Repeat with me. What? Restricted mindset. But God wants you to live with a miracle mindset. A miracle mindset that the God will do abundant and great things in our life. So you see, this is a beautiful, beautiful incident that happened. That God is showing that I can cause abundance to come into your life. Abundance to come into your life. So number one is the fear factor. And secondly is abundance. You will walk in abundance. I tell you today, you can tell God, God, I want abundance in my life. So what are the things that I need to do? Because in the Bible, God wants us to be blessed. God is the one who told Abraham. God is the one who told our dear uh, Adam. When Adam was created, what did God tell Adam? The first thing when Adam was created, what did God speak to Adam? Walk in love. Did he say? Did he say, be pious, read your Bible? Tell, what did the God say, tell, speak to Adam in the beginning? When he created him, he told him, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, abundance, have dominion, all those things. So, I'm not trying to say that you don't need other things. No, no, you read the whole Bible, you take the whole thing fully. But what did the Lord say? His plan was, you will increase. You will be in abundance. 
you will have dominion you will be a blessed person what did god tell uh, uh, abraham i will bless you you will be blessed god told the same thing to isaac i will bless you you will be blessed and be, be fruitful he told to noah he told to jacob joseph everybody so being blessed is whose idea bring prosperous and living in abundance is whose idea god's idea god's idea you may tell no oh i am so restricted sometimes you know our minds are restricted because we have been spoken lot of wrong things but if you read the bible in psalm 115 verse 14 somebody read for me psalm 115 verse 14 who's going to read for me please i'll also turn my bible can you stop there may the lord give you increase see that the tamil version doesn't have this beautiful thing i don't know but i'm so happy today i'm preaching in english so you will see the lord shall increase you more and more you and your children now the question is why more and more more itself is great that means when god is blessing you more don't restrict and stop you are not trying to be greedy but god is telling i'll bless you more and more when god blesses you you will start sowing more and you'll reap more and you'll get more then again you will sow more you'll get more you'll reap more you'll more 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 it's going to happen it is is going to increase and god's plan is you and your children must increase that is his heart not don't restricted and become nothing so look at me god's plan is increase god's plan is abundance god's plan is that you will be blessed and the greatest blessing is to have jesus in our life the greatest blessing is to serve jesus the greatest blessing is to serve the lord and i tell you the greatest joy is to serve the lord god wants you and he says what is the driving force what is the driving force before you serve the lord if there is something you need to forsake don't feel bad don't feel bad sometimes you have to give up i i gave up my music i gave up my music very sad after i gave up i sat down and cried like a girl i cried my whole world was fallen apart i don't see anything my whole dream is gone so many years of dreaming playing my music but god after few years asked me to pick up my music my music became different and uh, he made sure that i loved him more than my music see that's what he told peter do you love me more than this yes lord then you feed my lamb i want to tell you god is going to use you but you must come to a point to love the lord more than the wealth more than your talent more than other human beings more than everything to love him to fall in love and that's what he says when you start ministering the force that is behind your ministry is the love you have for god if you love me feed that is now i'm asking you my dear brother sister what god expects is that you will feed others that is if you know the word if you study enough then only you can share this word to others and feed them if you yourself don't know nothing and you only will give money that is not a very smart thing you must learn the word and you must help others to grow you will talk and you will encourage and you will become a god speaking person and i tell you through you many souls are going to be blessed that's why god has put you in the place where you work so you must equip yourself 
you may not go to a bible college but there are ways to equip ourselves to share to encourage and to bless and to build people so i want to ask you as you are sitting here is there any few people whom you have been building their life by the word by feeding them feed my lamb if you love me feed my sheep if you love me feed that means you must come to a position where you will feed them you will build their life you will become a life builder are you with me so it's my dear friends who play music keyboard guitar drums you are wonderful you guys are fantastic god has brought you this level but i as your brother will ask you to go one more step along with your music along with your music also learn to speak the word of god in a friendly way to open the eyes of the people who still don't know many things you are not trying to force anything but you are giving them explanation for people who don't know nothing are you with me sister that is the greatest joy to build people's life if you have not done that no i earnestly tell you pay attention to this your life fulfillment is once you start speaking there are online courses there are things that you can build from online from youtube you can learn there are things you can be benefited if you are interested even here the church will help you but the thing is don't be worried about money learn to come to depend on god and god's word teaches how to live in abundance how to live uh, because god has already supplied and prepared everything in advance for you his name is el shaddai like a mother breast feeding the child and a baby you know all sufficient thing is from the mother's milk when a baby is born the baby doesn't need supplements and nothing all the things are needed everything is available in the mother's milk like that god says i am el shaddai i will meet all your needs why do you worry today morning are you having a worry about survival are you worried about your finance of course you may be going through financial crisis but you can jump out of it you may be going through physical conditions where you require a healing touch of god right now you may be struggling but it's only a process soon you will see a breakthrough you will see the healing of god i'm telling you we are all going through difficulties but we will overcome we will overcome many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord will deliver him or her out of them all out of them all are you with me sir so physically you may have some challenge don't get discouraged our god is our healer our healing is already been done he says by my stripes you are healed and all these things are happening because of the righteousness of god in christ we are the righteousness of god in christ we have been made righteous because of a right standing healing comes because of a right standing wealth will come because of a right standing we will inherit because we are the heirs we are the children of god we are the joint heir we are also the children of abraham in galatian the bible says uh, the lord became a curse why because the blessings of abraham can come upon you people and me blessings of abraham through christ because god has blessed abraham only his generation will be blessed and that's why jesus was coming in the lineage and then because of your connection with christ you are also connected to the blessing of abraham see how smartly god has done that so all these things when we study and learn you will be under with understanding you will inherit the blessings of god because god has programmed it such a way we will receive the supernatural blessings of god we will experience supernatural blessings we will experience the abundant blessings of god like those people in the wilderness who in the world would have thought in the wilderness people will have a restaurant if at all they had a restaurant and you have so many millions people come which restaurant can ever sustain they'll all run away but god fed them god protected them god met their need and he says if i can do like that i will also do it to you right now you may be sitting here you have lost few things in your life you may be sitting and say i have lost few things in my life but remember 
God is a God of restoration. He will restore what we have lost. The locust eaten days. What has you lost? You could have lost little bit of your health. God will give back the health. Like a youth, it will be renewed. Amen. God is able to give you all the health. I want you to note some of your people. You go home and read Job 33, verse 23. You will read how God can say, he says, a person who is going to the pit to the point of death, he will restore him and his skin has been all gone. Only bones are jutting out. He says, I'll bring back like a youth, like a baby. The freshness can come back. Why? Because uh, there is one person who's told you about the ransom. The ransom is the money paid for setting a person free who's been a slave. The ransom is Jesus. And he says, when a person has been told that he is righteous. If somebody is there to tell how much you are righteous, in this world people are there to tell how much you are a sinner, that we don't need any preacher to tell us that we are sinner. The devil is already working that job. Why you need a preacher to do the devil's work? But the Lord says in that Job 33, you need one person, one in a thousand, to come and say how you are righteous. That is the joy, that is the good news. The good news is Jesus has made us righteous. He's given a right standing with God because he has given his righteousness. When you believe that, then the healing will come. When you believe that is where the restoration will come. If you don't believe that, you'll still be praying a poor man prayer. I'm a sinner. I'm a worm. I'm useless. Lord, help me. Please, how many years you're praying that prayer? It takes somebody to come and tell them. You turn your Bible to Job 33. Job 33, please. Job 33, verse 23, I guess. What a beautiful verse. My God opened my eyes to all those things. Job 33. Hmm. Hmm. One a thousand, if you have one person like that, to show man his uprightness, your uprightness is not because of your filthy rags, your righteousness, but the righteousness of Jesus that he has put on us. We have become righteous just like how Jesus never made any sin, but he was made sin by taking my sin, your sin, and putting on Jesus. And I am not a righteous person, but putting Jesus' righteousness on me, I become righteous. This truth. So you go and read, no? He says, I have found a ransom. Now, Verse 25, his flesh shall be fresher than a child's, that he return to the days of his youth. This is where God is restoring our health. My dear friends, you are struggling with health. Claim these verses and you will grow to see the healing of God and the strength of God. Amen. We all go through struggles, whether finance. And some of you young people, you may go through emotional drained sadness disappointment you've been let down you've been insulted you don't know how to handle it so when you allow it no it does a lot of damage that's why the lord says i give you the breastplate of what you need to protect yourself so these are the things that i would like to share with you so the lord is calling us people who have experienced these things to go and win souls and to disciple. That's why he says, go ye into all the world, make disciples. So how many of you are feeling that you are a disciple of Jesus? If you have been saved, if you've given your life to Jesus, you have become a disciple. You cannot say, I give my life to Jesus and not become a disciple. No. Make sure so that you should not simply give your life to Jesus not knowing what you are doing. When you give your life to Jesus, you start loving him and you start serving him, you will go for the heartbeat of your father. So God wants you and I to serve him. And God has given you beautiful youth. God has given you beautiful, lovely, beautiful face. All of you are very beautiful handsome in your own way and God has given you also influence there are people who will listen to you only 
not to others and god has given you life so with that we have to give to god more than money and wealth it's our life and i tell you you may ask me brother isaac jo if i give my life to jesus will i lose things that is the lesson the guy gave his boat and what does jesus say you give a boat for somebody for one hour he doesn't just use you and grow sometimes christians will use you and say hallelujah and go that is you may be hurt but when you know jesus is the one whom you are serving jesus is no man's debtor he used that boat for some time what did he do he blessed him in such a way he left the boat and came after jesus so you know giving a boat so much of blessing giving your life how much more blessing he gave the boat for him to sit down for some time but you give your life just like a donkey you know papa you ride on me i give my life i will carry you lord i will carry you where others can't go i will carry jesus i give my life come on come into my life and move and i tell you he is going to use you marvelously but remember forget about financial worry god is going to bless you in abundance abundance is overflowing amen but what drives you to serve the lord is the love that you have for him that you will serve the people why you serve people is the love that you have for him if you love me then feed my sheep today it is not for fame it's not for money lord i will serve you all the days of my life if i have to do it all over again i'll still serve jesus every day of my life i'll give my life to serve you lord because you died so that these people must be saved they should not go to hell now i want to help you lord go on your behalf let me be your feet let me be your hands let me be your representative here i am lord you will bless me i will go and i will love and i'll have care for people are you with me see people working with people is quite troublesome it's easy to work with five computers you type tick 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 only will come unless there's a virus or something but working with people i tell you it can be very draining sometimes people can also hurt you but now because of the lord in our life we have the breastplate of righteousness all equip nobody can hurt us you just listen in one year and another year you don't harbor bitterness you don't harbor all those words that people say they can treat us differently but that doesn't affect us we are running for a higher cause we are here to uplift people so we are not going to be hurt by people but we are going to bring healing to the people who are already hurt we are a healing force in the hurting world so i want to ask you this morning my friend how many of you would after listening to this what jesus said if you love me feed my sheep if you love me feed my lamb if you love me will you decide to take care of the people have a heart to feed the people speak to the people to touch the lives of the people when you do that i will take care of your needs you will see abundance only working in your life you will not be restricted you will be have so much of blessing you will be ready to let go let go your position let go your music let go something and move forward and upgrade and move forward to be a blessing so can i have my friend on the keyboard to just uh, just one thank you but what you played the pad sort of a thing i'm going to pray for you this morning we have time left for some more little time in the presence of god even as your eyes are closed there's a call of god on your life you would have despised it or not taken it serious and thereby you have gone into a life of distraction you could have gone after idols in your life 
may be giving much importance for a human being but the lord says let your eyes be single let your eyes be single don't turn to left or right but look to me for i am the one who died for you for i am the one who cares for you more than anybody in this world even if your father and mother forsake you i will never leave you nor forsake you i who called you i am faithful i'm able to complete everything what i've decided to do in your life do not be discouraged by the words people have spoken or what has happened in your past for i have called you for a higher calling a higher calling to bring a healing to those hurting people even as you speak to them people will weep and they will be touched and they'll be changed my child i've given you a call for i am calling you to be my disciple pick up your cross pick up your cross means the responsibility and follow me take my yoke my yoke is easy the yoke of the world is not easy but my yoke is easy if you would come i will use you money is not an issue for i am the god of abundance i am the god who can bless you more than what you can ask or think what your eyes have not seen ears have not heard even your mind has not comprehended great things i have shown store for those who love me hallelujah you are faithful oh god you are faithful one so unchanging you are a holy one father we come back to you lord we come back to you forgive us we are only thinking about our house our family our future though those things are can be only built by you it is only your effort that can build my life lord the builders efforts are in vain so father i pray for a healing pray for a breakthrough in finance blessings here after lord the things that the devil stole every locust eaten days come back in jesus name give back to your people father whatever the devil tries to steal when the devil tries to steal you will give sevenfold father you will take it and bless your people more than what they sold they lost thank you for your blessings lord thank you for your blessings sura hashanda ki andro ko sheke oh glory glory oh if any man shall honor sir me my father in heaven will honor him or her lord we want the honor of god we want to be honored in this world in the eyes of people even as i serve you help me lord i can give you only what i have whatever i have is what you gave father one life i want to give me lord use me lord use me father use me lord lord peter gave us boat lord but i want to give my life lord my life lord hallelujah i want to give my life and i know when i give you will only bless and prosper in the very beginning you did that miracle and when they got discouraged you did the same miracle for them to know you are the god of abundance you are the god of abundance you are not a stingy god you are a blessed god you will give more you blessed abraham so much that the earth could not contain his blessing lord you are a god who blesses you said i will increase you more and more and your children oh what a great god what a great god lord the agenda of god's heart what i want to catch my people here we all want to tell god god your agenda not my agenda i want to be a part of your plan i want to be a helping i want to be a part of you lord lord i want to be a partner in what you do lord use me include me i am your disciple lord is there anybody here who wants to tell the lord this morning i am your disciple i will go for you use me i want to live a life to serve you to win souls to build people to feed your lamb to feed your sheep 
just i'm not talking that you will become a pastor or a preacher but wherever you are god will use you do you have a desire in your heart if there is a person here who says isaac joe i want to serve jesus i don't know how but i want to serve jesus i want to lead people to the lord i want to bring blessing to people i want to bring healing to people i want to bring a change i want to be a catalyst to working in their life to bring the purpose of god is there anybody who wants to say i am a disciple i want to serve jesus wherever i am you can be a teacher you can be a businessman i'm not telling you you must leave that job no but your heart is telling lord is compelling me apart from all what i do wherever i am there i want to serve you lord is there anybody who has a heart to say i want to serve jesus yes brother i want to serve jesus i want to serve because i love jesus i love jesus and because i love you i will feed the lamb i will feed the sheep and you'll clap your hands and bless him and joshua thank you for coming and blessing us thank you heavenly father for this wonderful morning thank you for your word thank you for your presence thank you for you touch each and every one here holy spirit of god pray that you'll continue to lead and guide them each and every day as they committed to serve you to be a witness unto you to the people of the world in their life pray that you'll open doors of opportunity that oh lord that they'll be able to share of your goodness and pray that oh lord you'll cover each and every one here place every request into your hands every prayer in your house of prayer be answered in jesus name and right now once again pray for dear brother isaac joe joshua the entire family pray that you'll cover all of them in the daughter and oh lord with your blood and pray that you'll lead and guide oh lord pray that you'll bless them abundantly We ask this all in your wonderful and mighty name. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.